Hello again. In the first part of this lecture on CSS, we looked at what CSS is, power of CSS, some examples, and some basics how to create some style rules for a page. So look at these two examples here before we move on. Um, what do you think they make, what do you think they do? What's the first one going to do for us, do we think? Can you a little second or two think of that? Pause if you wish. What the first one will do is a redefine a default for the entire page. Because if you think about a body, we all the HTML of a page. So we want to redefine how the whole page looks. The default, instead of font family, Ariel is first, give free choice in case first is not, not available. Browser goes to the second one or the third one. But the first one should be over there, hopefully most machines of Ariel. We set a colour. We turn margins off to zero and padding off to zero. That's the default for our design on the page. So the second or two. The second one basically is a way we can, as we'll see in this shortly, we can style multiple tags at once. If we've got something in common we want all tags to have, say a border on the bottom being solid a certain colour, all tags to be certain colour green. And basically, we can redefine really H1s, 2s, and 3s together in 4s for that common look and feel about them. Take a look at that in practice. So, if I uh, borrow the CS from here, print our CSS uh, file, and press the right buttons, stick to the top. Ah, now what happens when you copy from PowerPoint sometimes? Get special characters pop in, line breaks and things, tab spaces. Delete those out. Otherwise, it won't work in the browser. So let's do that. And as well, these line into the semicolon. Important to have those in. Yeah. So let's change the font family, fold back at a foreground colour, margin and padding off. Take a look in the browser, see what that did to our web page. There we are, it's gone to Arial. Further restyled the page with margin, padding off, and so on. You can also do as well if you want a default background colour. We can try um, to set that. And here as well, in a plus plus, get some hints. Background colour, American spelling again, of course. Background colour, colon, and the value you want. And normally you could do a nice colour shade and you can look those up in the workshop. I'm going to use some kind of icky colour I can quickly type, a like yellow, great contrast. Again, refreshing the brass window. Basically, a nice combination of yellow and red on the page, they're fantastic. Combination of design. An example of what we can do. Let's say in our HTML we want to include a heading 2 in here, h2, and let's call it, you know, some subheading, because it's the subheading of H1, level of importance in the page. Got our CSS, and style the H2 in some manner. Just 
just show I can do with the background color of this whole, whole tag. So you can do that as well as the whole page. And set that to some of a color. Uh, let's say purple, that's nice and strong color. Stand out. There we go, the background color of that heading two changed to be purple. Different from the H1, which is no back color set. Whereas all these things picked up the default still with the Arial font. And then if we go to the slides, say, okay, you might want the heading one, heading two style the way we've got them so far. You also want H1 and H2s and any threes and fours on the page as well to have common styles in addition. So we do that by adding that new style rule to the end. Kind of got those PowerPoint characters, VT thingamajiggies come across. Delete those. And that of course is set a common border bottom and make both of them green. Incidentally, we'll overwrite the purple on the on the oh, want as a background color. Nice combination though when we see it. Let's try this out, see what it does. There we go. We're going green. Hard to read, apologies for that. There's H2 there still. Both now have got like underlying green border bottom on the page in there somewhere. It's got the common styles imported in for both of them. So here we're alluding to what we're going to look at next, which is the two basic ways to target or select tags to style in the CSS. The first one we've seen is the easiest, this, well, the easiest and straightforward one. Not the one side either. But basically is to target all of a certain kind of HTML tag at once. So we said we could style all the paragraph tags on the page, all heading twos, list tags, image tags, whatever you want. Target them by name in the CSS and it'll change all of them at once on the page. What was your uncle? Example, what would this do here? Well, of course, I'm sure you're all shouting Gary, it would make the H2 green and the paragraphs are red. Yeah, and all H2s would be green, and all paragraphs would be red. As default, it was on the page and the style we've actually set there by all tags of one particular type. That's fine, it's nice when you want to do that. You've got to give all tags common styling. You may want to vary parts of the page a little bit here and there, depending on the design you've got. As we'll see, we can do that as well. And, oh, actually, we've seen this already, time multiple elements at once, same lines of code. Similar to the one which changed the, uh, the, the color of the text to green, I put underline on the border bottom. In that case, we played all H1s to H4s. In this case, you want to change the font weight to bold uh, on it, one, two, and three. So I'll write it out as one a single line each, so it's neater and less line of the code, and therefore more marks in the assignment, more efficient. Put them on two lines like that. Comma separate list of the, the tags you want to all be the same thing, in this case, all font weight bold. So you can cover that kind of thing in the assignment where appropriate. More marks and doing it in the way at the top of the page there. You can also nest selectors, nest the CSS as you wish. So basically, as we said, you may want to have the default uh, paragraph color to be um, purple, the text color to be purple on the page. But inside the footer, we want to vary that color to green. So do that by targeting on the tag as nested within the footer. So you look at the paragraphs only that exist inside the footer. 
Let's see what I mean by that. So here is another example that I created earlier. HTML has been divided up into let's group in areas to talk about in week one. So header for the top part of the page, the final part of the page. Now for navigation, main for page pane, main page contents. Words out there, Gary. And push at the bottom there of the page. So let's see how this looks by default. With the current styling we've got. Either stain styles you've been playing with. And there we are, it's got sort of various bits of it already sort of coloured in, styled on the, on the paragraphs and heading styles have already um, set. Let me change some of the style rules because I look a bit yucky on the face of it to the eye. So you return my eyes. So I'll get rid of the back of the yellow. And we'll take off the purple on the back on H2. Now in HTML, what we said was we've got paragraphs in various places, haven't we? We've got the two paragraphs in the main and the one paragraph in the footer. And I say we want the paragraphs in the in, in the most of the page, including the main, to be coloured red. But the footer, you might want to have a different colour for the text in the, in the footer. So we can say there, we can say, let's, let's say, where's that message? Where's it live inside of? So we say, look at the footer, in the CSS, target the footer, tag. Inside the footer, then find the P. And because colour is easy to do, to remember how to do, let's change the colour of that. From the world of OSB, which is red, to green. There we go. These ones are red. Now I've made an HTML mistake there in some way, because that one's not appearing as red. Let's take a look at what I've done. The light demos are always kind of a dangerous thing. Yeah, I've made a mistake before. I haven't said the change to put it right. I missed out the P inside of the open angle brackets on line 18 there. So the browser couldn't understand what time case term it needed to be. And therefore, it was thrown a wobbler. There we are. So both of progress are now red. So the main area of the page. And there is the green bit in the footer, the bottom of the page there. Now what we can do as well, we can nest at multiple levels. So inside our, par our footer, we've got a paragraph, and then the text, the word great, inside the EM tag, which in the visual browser, remember, goes sort of italic. We can further emphasize that if we wish, by saying right. Let's look at the footer. Look at the paragraph tag inside the footer and the AM tag within that. That's into three levels of control. Styling, should I say. And again, it's because it's easy to actually know we'll, we'll change the font weight. No, we won't. Let's take a change in the color. and make that um, black. Refresh. And there we go, so that's gone black in the middle. We set the target of that nested level of HTML and made that particular bit black. If you remember as well, if we, if we can do, we can do inspect element or inspect in Chrome. 
Collaboration metal structure, expanding the body tags. Click on the right button, it would help. So not doing it. There we go. So we've got our, our nav there, head at the top of the page there, main in the middle, and footer at the bottom. And you can see where those tags are on the page. There's the footer. Primer inside the footer. Margins are thrown in orange. And we're going to look at the, where the EM is inside of the footer paragraph there as well. So nesting, again, marks in the assignment. You deploy nesting. More marks than if you, well, if you don't deploy nesting. That was targeting HTML by elm.tag name, as they're called. The whole types at once, and then again, more sort of fine granny control of nesting in certain parts of the page, changing tags only in those and not the rest of them on the page. The other way to do it is by class. You can define a class that uh, you think is going to be shared by different tags on your page and potentially other pages in the future, but they're related by some kind of concept. For example, here you want all tags that should be marked out as important to belong to an important class. And we can assign the class attributes to any HTML tag that we think should be important. For example, the paragraph there. And the CSS would define a style rule. So the dot in front is important for the class. Dot name of the style rule. And the style rule is going to apply in this case red, italic, bold. To make anything we feel uh, needs to be marked up and marked out, should I say, as important. And why is it important a better style name than Red Bull Italic? You might be thinking, well, Gary, Red Bull Italic describes exactly what this class does, but it's not really very descriptive of its purpose. The name should reflect the purpose, and the purpose is to make it stand out as important, not the fact that it's Red Bull and Italic. Think of descriptive names. Again, marks the experiment for thinking of descriptive names. That's good programming uh, practice. Let's see this in, in action. So in our HTML example, you might want to make this kind of link here to the courses. For some reason I'm just making this up as go along. Set out as important on the page. So we're going to apply the class attribute to that. And say apply our style row for, for important to this particular bit of HTML. And what else can be important on the page? Well, from university is great university, that's important. We are a great university, of course. So let's make that stand out as important as well. And the same rule again to there. These things that have not a very good example, real world examples, but basically things you think that are all important have the same rule related by concept. And there we go. And compare to the EM as well, if you wished. Anywhere you want on the page. So in the CSS now, we say dot to define the rule, because the class, and the name of the rule, important. It goes red because it's not a built in HTML tag name. Early brackets. And then our style rule that we wanted to. Uh, to, to apply. I'm just going to make something up. Font size. Again, not very well styled, but font size 60 pixels. And say font weight bold. So it'll certainly stand out on the page. Let's try it out and see what it does. There we are, those two bits there we applied it to, the courses, and that second paragraph in the main. We've got enormous, 60 points, and they're both bold. And we think for some reason those are the important parts to hide on, on that particular element of the page. You can do similar things as well, other things by concept. 
you could have, for example, um, five images in the page, you want them all to be aligned to the right or the left. You create a style rule which says align right, align left, and, and apply that to all those images you want to align left or right. Any images on, uh, images on the page that didn't want to be aligned left or right, you leave as they are by default and not apply the class to them. So wherever those things are related by concept, apply a class to those and style them all in the same kind of fashion. Okay, where do we get to? Yeah, in a similar way, we sort of um, sell multiple HTML tags of the early method, h1 to h4, with the same style rule. We can do the same with the classes as well. All these classes might share things in common and have different things that differ about them. And so they all want to be the same font weight, bold, italic. Then we can apply a style rule that applies to all three. In this case, on the bottom there, dot important, dot standard, dot intro. And I have that same style rule apply to h1 as the with HTML tags targeting Mona to or Go. Here's an example question. So we've got an external style sheet with this rule, H3, in color red. And you're linked to an external style. Internal style inside of that page of rule H3, color blue. What color are the H3 headings on the page? That's the answer. So you all need that. Tags are blue because the internal style sheet comes after the link tag. So the, the second definition wins because it comes second in the order. So let's say you've got some more style rules in our style sheet. Here we're targeting any heading three tags are just inside of the li tags only on the page. So these will only affect those H3s inside of LI tags for list item tags. And no L3, sorry, no H3s in the page will be affected. Call specificity or targeting nesting as we saw a moment ago. Question B given the CS are defined. What colour would the two H3s be? There's one here. Filling from the bottom there, outside the LIs, and one inside an LI list item, the last line on the page there. So, what colour would those both be? I'll think about that for a second. Pause it if you wish to think about it. So, the first one is red because it's defined by the H3 rule on the page. The second one is a better match for the rule that applies to H3s inside the LI tags only. Therefore, that one is going to be blue. H3s for general H3s in the page, call them red. Then we're saying kind of, if you like, we'll write that a degree for H3s inside the LI tags, make them blue instead. As of HTML, we can validate our pages. So we should do that. Make sure we're following the syntax rules of CSS that are semicolons are in place, curly brackets are in place, etc. Again, it's more if you, the generate HTML validation helps to make it sort of work with different browsers and things in a consistent kind of fashion. So validate your CSS as well as your HTML. And there we go, that was it. So we've taken a look at the power, the awesome power as a set of CSS. You contain very fine control of styling information on the page, colors, fonts, all that sort of stuff. You can put them in two ways. One, external style sheets, which is best for maintaining a large site, as we will need to do for our assignment. Internally, you only want to apply one rule to one page only. Different select selectors available. You can target by HTML tag, target by class, another job you want to do, 
And of course, a lot of the use of CSS will come across over the weeks. Okay, next week, layout control, positioning, animations, rollovers, all sorts of things you can do with CSS. It's an awesomely powerful thing. That's it for now. I'll see you in the next session. Thank you very much.